The saxophonist on the subway platform at Broadway Lafayette had excellent taste in music. He played Louis Armstrong's What a Wonderful World. It didn't sound lonely without the words at all. It sounded like hopefulness wrapped up in logic. And I was the fool, drowning in my own dopamine, dopamine leak. Thank you. A little boy crawled into the gorilla sanctuary at the Cincinnati Zoo. And notice how when we entrap a group of animals in a manufactured simulation of their natural habitat that we often refer to it as a sanctuary. <laughs> a little boy crawled into the gorilla sanctuary at the Cincinnati Zoo and none of the hyperbole machines on the glowing screens want to toe the semantic line of nuance because, well, aren't we just so comfortable observing prisoners from the civilized side of the Windex-stained plexiglass? Isn't it our last-ditch effort to hold on to the part of us that wants to believe that all of this can fit into the lenses of our toilet roll telescopes, the part of us that is simply an audience member floating in our popless luxury bubble sanctuary. See, a little boy crawled into the gorilla sanctuary at the Cincinnati Zoo, and excuse me, but I'm trying to appreciate the drama here. Just, just fishing for a little bit of raw, unscripted entertainment. Over here, we have Harambe the gorilla, named for a Kenyan rally cry and able to crack an unripened coconut in the palm of his massive hand. And, and over here, a curious little boy from the greater Cincinnati area, a lover of Ninja Turtles and other personified cartoon animal characters, still learning to use his theory of mind to hypothetically put himself in other people's shoes. Like, like how his mama might feel if he crawled into a moat with a 400-pound gorilla face to face in, in this little microcosm of evolution and political correctness and, and human narcissism and endangered sympathy in the shadow of a horrifying maybe. See, a, a little boy crawled into the gorilla sanctuary at the Cincinnati Zoo and he just sat there in that muddy moat drowning in the shadow of another primate as the helpless shrieking of the zoo patrons filled up the Ohio spring air. And a little boy crawled into the gorilla sanctuary at the Cincinnati Zoo, and, and speaking of which, speaking of which, I was walking with my son through midtown Manhattan last week on a Thursday afternoon, and he ran ahead of me just a little bit too far, and I told him to stop right there at the foot of an enormous glass skyscraper. And I caught a glimpse of him standing there, and I felt this anxious rush of fear shoot through my forehead as I pictured the building just falling, just toppling over on top of him. It didn't, of course, I mean, of course. But I've been pretty, I've been rattled pretty badly just thinking about it hypothetically, putting myself back there in that moment. I thought all the way through to the funeral and everything, and I wrote a letter to the city to have that building demolished, and some people told me that, I, that they thought that I was overreacting, but I just, I just couldn't read the building's body language. You see, a, a little boy crawled into the gorilla sanctuary at the Cincinnati Zoo, and when comparing the quantifiable significance of a four-year-old human child's life to the quantifiable significance of a 17-year-old endangered silverback gorilla's life, it is important to remember that this is an emotional proposition. Therefore, it can only be solved with numbers. Therefore, it, it must be considered in a vacuum, in, in an urban city, in a Kenyan jungle. You know, gorillas are just like people, y'all. At least as much as corporations are like people. They have opposable thumbs on their hands, and they have opposable thumbs on their feet. The market value for human life has been trivialized by the accomplishments of modern medicine. And don't you think that children, that children should be screened for their ability to, for their ability to control their impulses before being permitted entrance to a zoo? I mean, there are wild fucking animals in there. See, a little, a little boy crawled into the gorilla sanctuary at the Cincinnati Zoo, and you know, some of the first zoos in America during the 19th and 20th centuries had human exhibits, you know? The recreations of the natural habitats of indigenous people from all around the world, and little samplings of their living flesh, of their, of their living flesh paraded around for white people to gawk at. Uh, Egyptian belly dancers and, and pygmy tribesmen, Hindi peasants and Inuit chiefs dressed up and displayed like a, like a Macy's store window and a little boy, he crawled into the gorilla sanctuary of the Cincinnati Zoo and P.T. Barnum famously said that there's a sucker born every mo moment and I suppose that he was right but I'm not sure which species he was referring to. He also said that every crowd ha ha has a silver lining but I don't know, 
but I don't think he was referring to crowds that are watching screens, you know? See, a little boy crawled into the gorilla sanctuary at the Cincinnati Zoo and on the same Memorial Day weekend when 69 people were shot on the west and south sides of Chicago. And when I typed the phrase 69 shot into the search bar on Google, the first thing that pops up is a recipe for an alcoholic beverage called Love Potion 69. <laughs>